This new project um, was uh, initially conceived was an EP. I was going to make a six song EP to accompany a book that's coming out that a friend of mine made. His name is Dan Monick and he made a photography book that follows us through touring, through seven years of touring. And um, he wanted to include a piece of vinyl with the book. So I was like, you know what? We'll go and we'll make a six song piece of vinyl for you to put with the book, you know? And after I finished it, I sat down and was like, well, I'm gonna make another EP because I, you know, I was, I was kind of facing the reality that our next record wasn't going to be able to be released until 2011. So I thought, you know, nobody really is surprised when I throw out sad clowns or leakers or whatever, you know, so we, sh we should make another EP just to get out there because the book is going to be harder to find. Plus it's vinyl and not a lot of people really buy vinyl or care about the vinyl anymore, you know, so I thought, you know, as I was making the other EP, I was like, you know, what if I took both of these EPs, the one from the book and this other one that I'd made, and put them together as one CD and made that available on the tour, a la Sad Clown, you know. Um, and that's kind of how this CD came about. You know, the book is still coming out, but it comes out October, late October. In fact, I think it might even be October 31st. I could be wrong about that, but I think Halloween might be the release date of the book. And then, uh, and then the CD with the two EPs on them, obviously those would be due, or th th those would be out by the time you guys have this thing ready to go, pretty much. You know, th those would be out Tuesday. Um, and that's kind of why it has the long title it has, you know, because the EP for Dan's book was based on like a toast to all my friends, because there's a lot of people whose pictures and photos are in this book. You know, all of our friends that we've made through touring all kind of show up in this book, and then when I realized I was going to put the two together, I was like, well, what is the real toast here? You know, to all my friends, blood makes the blade holy is kind of the toast. And I guess the, the, the science behind that is, you know, one side is to all my friends, but the other side is even my ex-friends, kind of. You know, it's like all of these people, your friends, your ex-friends, everybody influences your path. Everybody challenges you. Your, your friends challenge you to learn how to accept and your enemies challenge you to learn how to let go. You know, and so I felt like the music on this definitely kind of fit that. Plus, it's kind of a jack from Charles Bukowski. He was kind of this dude that coined the phrase to all my friends. And, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Barfly, but that's kind of where the title got stolen from. Asked to describe the sound of this record. You know, I don't know, like, there's a lot of sounds on here, and they kind of go all over the place. There's a little bit of funk. There's some country. I mean, there's a clarinet on this record. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of, it's kind of all over the place. Um, so if I had to describe all of it at once, I would probably say this record sounds like uh, sipping paint through a straw. It's thick. It's it's you know, depending on. What you like, it might taste good, it might not, you know. Yeah, sipping paint through a straw. Men don't sip. <laughs> women and kids sip. Men, we drink. I do that a lot, I guess. I do phonetics because I, I, do, I do attempt to make r words rhyme with each other that aren't necessarily supposed to rhyme because I just think it helps open up more of what you could say, you know, more of what could be said. Um, Commodities, that song in specific, I felt like I was able to use the phonetics that you speak of. The, the beat's not, it's, it's not, a, it's not that, the beat's not too fast, it's kind of slow, and obviously on a slower beat, you have a little bit more room to communicate what you're trying to say. And uh, not only is the beat slow, but it's different than most of the beats that you might hear me rap to. You know, it's slow and aggressive, you know, and that's a... Uh, I guess that, that alone was inspiring in the sense of, oh, what are you going to make this song about? Because the song seemed slow and aggressive, so I decided to make a song about 
a scene that is slow and aggressive, if that makes any sense. You know what I mean? I, and, it, and it's, you know, it's one of my preachier songs on this particular project, and I try not to really do those preachy songs too often, but I grew up on KRS-One, so I'm going to preach here and there, you know what I mean? And, and so, you know, but I, I try to keep it as relevant as possible and not just, like, preach about how fucked up America is, but more so hone in on a certain type of individual, the, the social networker who finds their validation through how many people thumbs up their status. You know what I mean? It's like, um, yeah, thumbs up your status. I'll put a thumb up your status, update, thumb up your date. i put a thumb up your date. Scalp is a song on there. It's probably one of my favorite songs on there just because musically it's got a vibe to it that Slug ain't supposed to rap to. Like it's almost a gangster rap beat, you know? Aside from the like little weirdo drums that are in there. But like musically it's kind of on some pimp shit. And uh, so I wanted to tell a story, you know? And I'm not the dude that comes out with street stories on record, you know? Even though I, I grew up in South Minneapolis and seen my share of street shit, but I've just never been that guy that wanted to present that in my music. But that beat was calling for me to tell some sort of street story. So I had to kind of figure out, okay, well, what kind of street story am I allowed to tell? You know, and so I told one from my own perspective. And, you know, I always told myself if I was to ever write songs of this nature, I would always make sure that I represent the ending in a way that reflects real life as opposed to, you know, you shot the cops, you got away with the girl, and you got the gold. You know what I mean? Like, really, that's not how it works. You do bad stuff, and bad stuff happens to you. The particular ending that I did put to this is probably a little bit more extreme than the standard ending that would go to a story like this, but I think that was just kind of my own insecurity, maybe, of, like, making sure that I kind of go extreme with it to make sure people realize that I'm not turning into a drug tail rapper, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure, but also, you know, there's a couple of Easter eggs in that song, hidden throughout that song. Um, and so I think that also kind of helps smooth out the fact that I did make a song about a drug dealer who was trying to get me to go pick up a package for him, you know? Free falling, I guess I would consider to be a standard for atmosphere. You know, if we have a standard, free falling is that standard. As you mentioned, it touches off on relationships, it touches off on jobs, you know, and then it touches off on me being preachy, you know, and so, and so I would say free falling is, is a standard, but the music, you know, it's like borderline country rock. And that intrigued me when they brought me that beat and I heard that, I was like, I think I wanna mess with this I don't know why, because I don't like country too much. I don't really care about rock all that much either, but something about the music reminded me of, I don't know, like some white boy blues or something like that. You know what I mean? And so, and so I wanted to approach it from a way where I could tell the blues, but also at the end of it, flip it and be like, you know what though? Like, it's not really the blues, it's the sky blues. You know what I mean? Like, and so, I guess that, that makes it a, a full-fledged atmosphere standard. You know, the other thing I noticed calling it a standard is we got all these songs where one verse is about the guy, one verse is about a girl, not even necessarily related, and then the third verse is always my, like, overview of the whole thing, and I got to quit writing my songs like that. Like, I got to break out of that shell. It's, a, it's, it's, it's probably my most selfish song, so I, I, I could understand if, if other people don't like it. But to me, I smile when I hear it because it is a true story. And when I was a kid and this happened, I wasn't too happy about it. But now as an adult reflecting on it, I'm very happy with the lesson that I took from it, you know, and, and the music to it. It's kind of like, it's got this too short bass line going on underneath this piano, this pretty piano, and you're just not supposed to put those two things together. So, you know, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That's probably my favorite song on the record. Uh, real talk, no lie, I would say about 80% of my songs are misinterpreted to the point where 
I nowadays find myself forcing myself to be as direct and straightforward as possible because I don't want to be misinterpreted. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, naturally my first thought is I'm being misinterpreted because I'm a horrible communicator. And that's why people don't understand what my point was to this song or that song. And then the other side of me is like, you know what? It's not my problem what you interpret. You go ahead, interpret whatever you want out of the song because that's yours now. You know, I have my interpretation and I'll hold it and keep it, but whatever you take from it, I have no control over that. It's yours, do, do with it what you will, you know? But yeah, like, I, I feel like a, a good portion of our material has been misinterpreted and I'm just still kind of learning how to, how to, how to live with that, you know? And, but I do see myself once in a while writing more straightforward than I might have, say, five years ago. But that's because, you know, sometimes what I'm trying to say, I don't want to be misinterpreted. I want, I want to be as good a communicator as I possibly can. I would, I would say that, it, it, you know, at any one of these shows, you might see anywhere from five to six songs off of this new project, you know, but we play decent sized sets. And so it's not for lack of playing any of the older material. You know, we're trying to do a pretty decent, healthy mix of the catalog here. But, you know, when there's some new music you have that's new to you even, it's exciting to perform that. It's exciting to see if you're gonna mess it up. It's exciting to see how people are gonna respond to it, you know, and so you can't help but, but try to jump in and, and, and push some of the newer material, you know, but we'll balance it out by playing some of the old crap too, you know. Be excellent to each other.